burn up and they're devoured and they're gone, then if we believe that they, go, that they burn forever, but it's really true that they're devoured and they're gone, we need to accept that. We need to believe that. But on the other side, if we think that they're going to be annihilated because that's just our doctrine, but the truth of the matter is that they're really going to burn forever and ever, then we need to accept that too. Wherever the Bible leads us, we've got to go. Right? And we, and we don't want to just look at one text. We've got to look at the whole Bible. And we have to put the pieces together based upon a sensible study of God's Word. Now, go back to chapter 20 and take a look at something. In verse 9, when it talks about the, the people marching across the earth and surrounding the new Jerusalem and then fire coming down and devouring them, in verse 9, do you see any symbolism there in verse 9 at all? Anything symbolic in verse 9? I don't see anything. It's just a straight narrative. Now look at verse uh, 10 about the torment, day and night, forever and ever. Do you see any symbolism in verse 10? See, see anything symbolic there? Right. Verse 10 says where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Now the beast in the book of Revelation has seven heads and ten horns. Obviously symbolic. So here's something that's very important. Verse 9, where it says they're devoured, has no symbolism. Verse 10, that talks about being tormented day and night forever and ever, it does have symbolism. And I have discovered when I've read the book of Revelation that every single time Revelation talks about people being tormented forever, it always, how many times did I say? Always is connected to symbolism. Always. Now go to chapter 19, back up to chapter 19, and let me just show you verse 3. Here's a quick example. Chapter 17 in Revelation and 18 and part of 19 is about this woman. See this woman here? She's called Babylon in Revelation 17. She's a mystery woman. She represents uh, false religion around the world. And this woman is riding a seven-headed, ten-horned beast in Revelation 17. Now, is that symbolic or literal? Is there going to be a real woman riding around on a seven-headed, ten-horned beast somewhere that CNN and ABC and CBS are going to be doing a story on? Obviously not. This is a symbol. This is symbolic. Now, go to chapter 19 and look at verse 3. Here, at the very end, God's people are rejoicing because this woman gets her just desserts. In verse 3, it says, again, they, sh they said, Alleluia, and her, that's this woman, her smoke, and how long does her smoke go up? Her smoke rose up forever and ever. Now, does this mean there's going to be a place somewhere in, in, on the earth or somewhere out there where this woman w riding the seven-headed, ten-horned beast, that you can actually point and say, hey, there she is, and there's her smoke, and her smoke is going up forever and ever and ever? Obviously not. This is another example of symbolism. I'm proving my point. Every time in the book of Revelation, it talks about smoke going up for, forever, torment going on forever. It is always connected to symbolism. Every single time. Now, let me show you some other verses, because there are plenty of verses that describe what happens to the lost that are not symbolic at all. Let's go, to, go back to Malachi, right before Matthew, and take a look at... Malachi 4, verse 1, the Bible says, For behold, the day is coming, and this is a whole day, the day is coming that will burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that is coming, what will it do to them? It will burn them up. Burn them up. Who's talking here? Says the Lord. Right, so don't, don't take my word for it. This is what God says. Saith the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Now, if there's no root and no branch left, how much of it's left? Nothing's left. It's gone. No root, no branch, gone. And that's what this text is saying. That's what's going to happen to the lost. Verse 3 says, You shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be what? What will the wicked be? The wicked will be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith Steve Wahlberg. No. This is not what Steve Wahlberg says. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Lord says. And Steve Wahlberg is simply saying what the Lord says. I want to direct you to God's Word. So there it's very plain. Now here's another passage. Verse 7, Jude 7 says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, 
They are set forth for a what? For an example, suffering the vengeance of what is it? Of eternal fire. Now some people quote this and they say, look, Steve, it says eternal fire. They're going to burn forever. That's what the Bible says. They say, don't you believe the Bible? And my response is, yes, I do believe in the Bible. And take a close look at it. It says that uh, that eternal fire, what, what cities did that eternal fire fall on? Sodom and Gomorrah. And it fell on them as an example of what's going to happen to the lost. Now here's my question. Are Sodom and Gomorrah burning today? No, they're not. They're not burning today. They're not burning today. They were burned up by eternal fire. So when it says eternal fire, it doesn't mean the fire goes on forever. It just means it's God's fire. It's an eternal fire from God. And when it does its work, it does it thoroughly. And Sodom and Gomorrah, brothers and sisters, is an example of what eternal fire means and what it's all about. Now let me just show you another text here. This is 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 6. Peter also talked about Sodom and Gomorrah, the same scene. And he said that the fire turned them into ashes as an example. 2 Peter 2.6. So compare Jude 7 with 2 Peter 2.6 and it's clear that the eternal fire turns turn those cities into ashes and that's an example of what's going to happen at the end just like we read in Malachi that the fire will burn them up. Now go to Ezekiel 28. This is the clincher. This is the clincher. Ezekiel 28 is talking about the devil. And what's going to happen to the devil? What's going to happen to Satan? Well, you would think, I mean, he, he's the worst of them all, isn't he? He's the worst of the bunch. What's going to happen to him? Uh, Ezekiel 28, verses 14 through 19 is talking about Lucifer. Verse 15 says he was perfect in his ways uh, until he sinned. Verse 17 talks about his heart being lifted up because of his beauty. He became corrupt, definitely talking about an angel. Uh, verse 18 says that he has defiled his sanctuaries by the multitude of his iniquities, by the iniquity of his traffic. And notice what it says. God says, Therefore, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of you. It shall devour you, and I will bring you to what? To ashes upon the earth, right in the sight of all them that behold thee. So here it says in verse 18 that what's going to happen to uh, Satan at the end? God's going to bring him to ashes upon the earth at the end of a thousand years. That's where the devil's going to go, and that's what's going to happen to him. Verse 19 says, All they that know you among the people shall be astonished at you. You will be a terror. And then it says, And never shall you be any more. How's that sound? All the people should say what? Amen. Amen. That's right. Uh, isn't it going to be great when there is no more devil? He's not going to be anywhere. The Bible says, God says, you will not be anymore. You'll be gone. God is going to erase evil from his universe. It's going to be gone. It's going to be gone forever. That's what the Bible says. Uh, we already read a couple of days ago when we studied, actually it was yesterday, time is blurry in my mind, uh, yesterday when we studied about can the dead talk at all, we went back to Genesis and we talked about the serpent and how the serpent came into the uh, Garden of Eden and Satan spoke through the serpent. And what was the very first lie that Satan told? Satan 